Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It's been a little while. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys the part one uh, of two for all of the Righteous Fire changes that will be occurring in 3.19. Now, from this date exactly right now, all of this information at the moment is going to be just based off of the 3.19 development manifesto, meaning we still don't have all of the information. So th some things may even be changing. Uh, so that's why this is part one of part two. Part two will come out after the patch notes, which should typically include the expansion teasers and all of the other stuff. So this one is primarily just nerfs. So let's go ahead and jump right on into it. Uh, first off, I want to start by saying RF will still be an okay league starter as of how everything is working right now. The biggest things to understand is that uh, our single target damage dropped by about like 20%. So bossing is going to take longer to kill. Map clear should be the exact same for the most part. Uh, and let's get started. So uh, over here, I have a nice little image picture. Of, I pretty much clipped everything that would be, you know, noteworthy to talk about. So uh, over here, guarding, regarding defense balance, uh, essentially defiance banner was cut in half. So defiance banner used to give 30 to 49% increased armor and evasion. It now stops at 24%, meaning it's quite literally half the amount. It does also grant uh, like double the amount of, oh, not double, but it makes it so mobs do uh, have a less chance of critting you. Uh, we don't really care too much about that. It's okay. Don't get me wrong, but I don't really see it being worth the potential mana reservation. So as of right now, to make things easier, we're going to eliminate it from the build guide. It's not a super big deal. I'll explain why a little bit later. Okay, uh, moving on. For high-end crafters, grasping mail that gave 100% global defenses is gone. It's now only 50%, so doesn't matter for the majority of us at all. Um, this is a big one. The Cluster Jewel Mastery uh, for a 15% mana reservation efficiency is gone. It's, it's deleted from the game. This is part of why we will not be using Defiance Banner anymore. It will to be um, basically for allowing us to get extra kind of like pulling some of that mana reservation back uh, so we can get those auras set up easier so mana reservation efficiency on your mastery is gone technically you could look at that as like one skill point back or you could just put it into the increased damage per aura which is like usually 24 percent damage i think maybe a little bit higher as well when you go agus variant um regarding regarding the mana reservation efficiency the auras and everything are all fine. I have already done some POB testing. We can gain all of our auras back, even in the Aegis variant. So that's not really a problem. Uh, just, just so you guys know. Uh, however, if... Yeah, no, 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 no. You're pretty much good there. Uh, I think you can use an Enlightened Gem to potentially save some points, but it's not a super big deal when it comes to that. Um, this is one that kind of sucks, but at the same time doesn't. So the Gravicious modifier for the life as energy shield is gone from the game now. Uh, that whole thing where, you know, you do the six link craft and you get your chest piece and you craft life as ES. So essentially I'll have to redo my crafting method. That's gone. However, they replaced it with, dare I say something even more powerful. So now instead of it being the life as ES, you now can get, well not can, it's guaranteed now, um, physical damage from hits taken as fire and lightning. So if you look at the crafted modifier, it's six and six, six plus six is 12. So 12% 12 conversion. Now I wanna talk about a second here to explain why this is good. So number one, we lost armor on our defiance banner, which means that we don't mitigate as much physical. We gain the ability to gain more conversion. Conversion is extremely strong for this build because with melding of the flesh at the late game variant, you're, you're taking your elemental res and putting them usually above like 84, 85, closer to 90. Even if you're only like 85 Eli res, making 12% of physical damage go to your Eli is a very substantial uh, amount of physical damage you're preventing at late game. This is actually something very good. Uh, one thing to note is I believe this is also a prefix, which means the crafting method for our chess piece is similar. Uh, you're doing the same exact thing. You're just using a different essence which we'll talk about later slash in the next video. Okay, going up over here, this is the big one. Fire traps damage has been nerfed a lot, um, specifically the over like the damage over time from the burning ground. However, it's not 
as big as a hit that it, as it seems because fire traps on hit is still very strong so because the on hit is still strong the ignite that it creates is still potent meaning it's not as big of a damage drop but it's still pretty big i think it's like between 18 to 20 percent after taking that into account but this does not really affect your mapping clear speed which is my favorite thing to do so so far everything is okay bossing is going to be slower do not forget though we have an entire expansion reveal i believe along with um the league mechanic which typically introduces a lot of power creep uh this one does not personally affect our build as this is the divine blessing change they made it now so blessing can no longer be supported by life tap a lot of players were doing like spin-off versions where they were using uh malevolence on divine blessing with life tap can't do that anymore this one does suck especially for the more casual players so kind of does suck but i'm gonna try to help you out here the modifier on flasks that we used to roll for like four six and seven charges is gone now it's only one two and three gaining two to three charges on hit should be more than enough for one well, two might not be more than enough three is definitely good for mapping when you're mapping your charges should still be pretty much automated um on three one thing to note here i went to poe db to go confirm so we're able to get transgressor masochistic and flagellant but it will be one charge two charge and three charge this means that the flasks you get out of tier one maps are viable to roll because you can hit two charge gain on hit which is enough to get started so thankfully it's not like that big of a deal in terms of like when you get your flask set up so i was at least happy that this is like something that's still manageable all right so that part is done uh, there is one other thing i want to bring in there is going to be a new contender to the scene of righteous fire they're thick they're big they got the new Marauder MTX, but we're not going to strength stack, and it's Jug. Now, before I get started, big con with Jug, it does literally no damage, and our damage just got lowered. Jug is going to be a more expensive variant that's more heavily invested into gear and cluster jewels, but their, their defenses should be unrivaled now. So Jug now has two new Ascendancy nodes. They split it. So let's read the bottom one first. Untiring. It grants... 40% increased life regen. Remember though, Inquisitor's Pious Path effectively doubles your life regen. This is 40% life regen. 1.5% physical prevented from hits in the past 10 seconds is regenerated as life per second. And Juggernaut's Unbreakable now is 8% of your armor applies to elemental damage from hits. What I believe this allows Jug to do is be somewhere around like, you know, if you notice the um, the notable on the tree down in the Marauder section, I think it's Prismatic Skin or Prismatic Heart, it's like two max all res. Two max all res with a shield for two all res is four all res. That puts you at 79 res. Uh, then just based off tree pathing, you can get two max fire res, which puts you at 81 max fire res. So sitting at around 79 to 80 max res, not even including Eldritch Currency yet, with 50,000 armor, that is more than enough to face tank majority of the game, meaning I do believe Jug can potentially skip block and skip melding. And with those points that you would normally invest into block and melding, you can get an extra damage on your gear that's not res, and you can get into a deeper cluster jewel setup. So I think Jug is a potential option, but it's a lot more expensive, I would imagine. So Jug is on the placeholder, but definitely something I'm very excited to do. You can expect me making a Righteous Fire Jug as probably a second or third character. Um, really curious to see how this works. I've never gotten to use this modifier before, and the only modifier with this armor applies to Ellie is Transcendence, I believe. All right, so let's get those out of the way. Now I want to talk about some bread and butter. All right, so this is basically... Um, a TLDR of the, this is essentially a TLDR of the, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, of the manifesto. So let's get started. Uh, Trickster RF. Trickster is being reworked. They didn't tease exactly what, but Trickster RF is already a thing. It's just kind of gimmicky. We may get to see an actual Trickster RF this league, um, that doesn't take insane amounts of gear. Jug RF we just talked about and Inquisitor RF did not get changed. As of now, zero changes with Inquisitor, so that's cool. 
Uh, Fire Trap nerf we already talked about. What I didn't talk about is the potential options. I get a lot of questions about these, so I wanted to kind of just cull the questions right now. Flame Wall still does significantly less than Fire Trap. Searing Bond actually does more damage than Fire Trap, but Searing Bond doesn't have an on hit. Searing Bond cannot ignite. And Searing Bond is a totem that you probably don't want to put down. So that is an option for players, but I don't think you really want to do it. Scorching Ray got buffed slightly in this patch, but the biggest problem with Scorching Ray, there's two problems. Number one, you need to stand still. Nobody wants to do that. When you're doing end game content or things like the feared or just a lot of rippy content, you don't want to stand still unless your character is thick enough where you can essentially face roll the whole game already, but you're not at that point in League Star, right? Uh, the other thing about this is the ramping damage. Because we don't really get cast speed in our build, it takes so long for the damage to ramp that it's not an accurate representation because it takes you so long to read those ma to reach the maximum stages. That's why I don't even include exposure here because when you're fighting things like Awakener and stuff where they're just blinking all over the screen, you're losing all of your stages every time that happens. So you're probably better off just using Fire Trap. Um, all of the other skills that usually people recommend, like people say, why not Explosive Trap or Flamethrower Trap or Armageddon Brand? None of those skills have built-in burning meaning the damage you're getting from those skills are actually ignites, and ignites are scaled different. As an example, Fire Trap gets burning ground and can ignite, so it does both, right? So armor got nerfed via Defiance Banner. Um, with the new Gravicious mod being reworked, we talked about this, right? This will put a bigger emphasis on us going melding. Uh, one thing I actually forgot, I forgot to bring up melding, I'm sorry. Melding of the Flesh received a nerf. Um, I'm just going to type it out because I don't know, you know, just in case uh, people can't hear me properly so melding is now also has an additional four to six max res minus so what this means is for players who are struggling to hit 90 max res with melding it's going to be more difficult i do think that this was warranted anyway i thought melding was already too strong and even if you have like 85 86 max res your character is still a monster. You don't have to get that 90 max res. That 90 max res should be for players who are really investing in a currency, really investing in elevating their, um, you know, their influenced affixes. So I actually personally do really like the melding nerf. Oops, a daisy. Can I control Z that? Yes, I can. Okay. So uh, a big thing is due to that 15% mana reservation efficiency removal um, during the campaign, you can grab this jewel called Conquer Efficiency. That Conquer Efficiency Jewel is going to allow you to run our bread and butter triple 50%. So that's the term Purity of Elements and Malevolence. Uh, without the Conqueror's Efficiency, you're not going to be able to run it. And that's okay, because if you remember my build guide, which will be updated, don't worry, I'll be updating everything after patch notes, you'll be running uh, Vitality until you're able to squeeze in Malevolence. So basically, you're running Vitality until you get Conqueror's Efficiency. Then when you can slot in that Conqueror's Efficiency, you can go Malevolence. So um, if you look here, I talk about uh, changing the Essence. So previously in my guide, you would use either an Essence of Greed for high HP roll, or you would use Essence of Envy for high Chaos roll. Now we're most likely going to be using a Loathing Essence, which gives Mana Reservation Efficiency. Um, this right here allows you to drop your two-point Conqueror Efficiency Gem and is very good for later when you are trying to go, um, when you are trying to go Aegis Aurora with Tempest Shield and Purity of Ice. Actually, I did have the, the thing about melding right here, so no problem. Uh, Aegis Aurora was not spoken about whatsoever, so, excuse me, until now, we don't really have any info on Aegis Aurora, so that's just staying as it is. Um, and then I have like a little bit of a breakdown here. So campaign act one through act 10, Righteous Fire's leveling process should feel similar. You're going to have a bit less single target during the campaign, but that should not be a problem at all. We're going to have a bit less armor after, uh, but after automating our granite flask, that won't be a problem. We're also going to be minus two skill points since you're going to be using a conqueror's efficiency during the leveling phase. Early maps tier one to tier five. Uh, remember, we don't have the life as ES anymore. So without having our life as ES Gravicious Craft, we're going to have a bit less EHP since we don't get the 500 bulk of energy shield. 
I expect our damage should be totally fine at this stage of the game, uh, along with our defenses being just fine. One big thing here is that we want to make sure to pick up uh, flask bases since you can craft them with the two charges gain on hit. Um, yellow mapping. So progression here should be identical to previous leagues, except for the noticeable boss damage drop off around tier 10 maps. Um, this is due to the minus damage of fire trap. So you want to make sure you get that six link, uh, whether through its divination cards, a corrupted six link would even be okay. Just in general, you want to make sure you're gearing your character. So red tier maps. At this point, your damage for bossing is going to drop significantly. And to be fair, it may not start dropping until you have like those map mods like boss life, monster res, cannot apply exposure, etc. Um, so if you don't notice it now, you'll definitely notice it in, in T15, 16, and Guardians. To remedy this, we're going to have to spend some currency. Cluster Jewels will allow us to drop the bottom side of the tree, the Champion of the Cause section for auras. This will allow for additional damage scaling. Remember, Cluster Jewels do not have to be that expensive, but on the first week of the league, they're probably going to be expensive to acquire the base. And sadly, that's just the reality of scaling damage, right? Small Mono Reservation Clusters, I'm concerned that these are going to be very expensive due to the Mono Reservation changes, but the Small Mono Reservation Clusters are what allow you to get your build min max to get your skitter bot going so righteous fire sadly might be more expensive this league for even less of a return but it very much should still be a build um and then anointing charisma will be expensive uh will help with damage killing to enable skitter bots while using the above mono reservation jewel and that's pretty much the overall rundown that i can give you guys uh, i really do feel a large part of our power creep is going to come from the expansion content potentially some new items um, two things I would be concerned about with the patch notes is if they change the Legacy of Fury Maven Boots and if they directly nerf radius scaling or damage scaling on Righteous Fire itself. As of now, there is no indication in the manifesto that they're going to do any of that. So as of now, I'm still very happy with it. And the third potential nail in the coffin could be changes to Inquisitor, in which case we do have a backup of going Jug, but... It's not really what I, I mean, like I want to do Jug, but it's going to be a currency sink, which nobody wants to do that on a league starter at the beginning, right? Nobody wants to be stuck in yellow tier maps because it takes them four minutes to kill a map boss. Hopefully that's not going to be the case, but always preparing for the worst, right? Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Um, before I stop, do not forget a couple of places where I'll be updating information. Uh, we have this website. I'm sure most of you guys know of it. It's called pox.net. Over here in this box here, this box is basically your lifesaver. This box will have all of my 3.19 info as it gets updated, and I'll be updating my POBs for 3.19 as well. This is where all of my updated info will be. I don't like putting my POBs on my YouTube videos as much anymore, unless it's a dedicated video meant for it, as explained over here, right? This is where you'll be able to find your info. Then there's the FAQ, which I'll be updating for 3.19. Furthermore, there is one more link. Um, this last one is on PoE Vault. PoE Vault, we have a personal build guide. It's, you know, our Righteous Fire one, uh, but it's a written version. Sorry, my internet is shitting itself. So this right here quite literally has a written version of what a lot of people have been asking for. It's got the pros, it's got the cons. I am going to have to edit this quite a bit, specifically for 3.19. But just to help you guys out, I know one thing that a lot of people always ask for um, is, for example, let me just go over here to uh, the gems here. I think this is the gems. Nope, that's gear. Shit, where's gems? Uh, for some reason, this like got minimized. It didn't used to be minimized. Ah, here we go. Yeah. So over here, you have like an entire gem leveling section where it literally tells you what gem to grab and when. Um, so for people looking for a more written version, uh, you can go ahead and take a look here. And again, all this info will be updated, you know, moving towards 3.19. So that's pretty much everything I got for you guys for now. Anyway, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to post them down below. Don't forget, I've also got a very active community in Discord. Uh, and also in Path of Exile Global 911 for Righteous Fire questions. I'm out. Take care. Can't wait to see you guys in the uh, Lake of Calandra 3.19 release. So for now, I'm out. Have a good one, everybody.